Welcome to Mapperton. My name is Julie Montague and I live here at Mapperton House and Gardens alongside my parents-in-law, the Earl and Countess of Sandwich. In 2004, my husband Luke and I actually got married here and since then we've opened up the grounds and the gardens for other couples to enjoy Dorset's finest country wedding venue. Mapperton is an ancient village listed in the Doomsday Book when it belonged to William Des Moines, Sheriff of Somerset. Mapperton is derived from the word Malperton, meaning farmstead where the maples grow. The current manor house was first built in the 1540s, with additions in the 17th and 18th centuries. My husband's family moved to Mapperton in the 1950s, as his family has owned a smaller house and adjacent land here since the 1800s. Mapperton is the most wonderful place to get married. Enchanting, intimate, and wildly romantic, the unspoiled landscape and breathtaking valley gardens provide an unforgettable backdrop for your day. Mapperton was voted the nation's finest manor house by Country Life magazine a few years ago. We are so lucky to live here and are delighted to be able to share this extraordinary place with other couples on your wedding day. So let me take you on a tour. There are two entrance drives at Mapperton. The first is for your guests and runs along the top of the field, providing a magnificent view down to the house. The road runs to the car park, which is in a field close to the coach house where you will have your wedding breakfast and party. You may also catch a glimpse of Percy, our giant African tortoise, who lives in his own luxurious tortoise house. There are other animals around here too, including Indian runner ducks, phantoms, and a very proud cockerel. You are welcome, however, to use the main drive on your wedding day for a grand entrance in front of the house. And did you know that you'll be walking in the footsteps of the stars? Gwyneth Paltrow starred in the film Emma here back in 1996, while in 2015, Carrie Mulligan played the lead in Far From the Madding Crowd. And most recently, Mapperton was turned into Mandalay for the Netflix film Rebecca, starring Lily James and based on the famous novel by Daphne du Maurier. On your wedding day, you will have exclusive access to all of the grounds and our stunning gardens. However, I'm afraid you can't come inside the house as we're still living here, but you can take the most magnificent photos on the outside. Mapperton offers a variety of locations for your ceremony. You can opt for a more formal setting at the Garden Pavilion, followed by a blessing in our church, or you can have a romantic ceremony right by the grottoes above the fountain court. For those of you who want a more traditional service, there is All Saints Church, which dates back to the 12th century. The church can hold up to 90 guests for a religious blessing, which follows the same format as a traditional church service. In fact, my husband and I had our blessing here, as did my sister-in-law. All Saints Church is a charming medieval English church with original stained glass windows and oak pews. It even houses a monument by Peter Shoemakers, who also created Shakespeare's famous memorial in Westminster Abbey. There's lots of room for musicians and the space has a wonderful acoustic. The church, however, requires a special license from the archbishop for a full wedding service, but you are able to have a wedding blessing which follows a very similar format. Many couples do choose to get married here at the Garden Pavilion, which stands at the end of the croquet lawn, overlooking the sunken gardens and having the main house as their backdrop. Of course, you can get married inside the pavilion and your guests can be seated outside with an aisle in between. And yes, the croquet lawn can be used for croquet and any other games that your guests might enjoy. Plus, you could put up a bouncy castle for kids, and those couples who have larger weddings can even place a marquee here that holds up to 400 guests. Mapperton is best known for its stunning Italian gardens, and it's a wonderful surprise for guests when they reach the edge of the lawn and see the extraordinary views down below. These gardens were laid out by Ethel Labouchere in the 1920s after the First World War. 
She loved to paint, so she created various spots around the garden where she could set up her easel. And today, these same spots can be used as a backdrop to make extraordinary wedding photos. You're the only girl got a hold on me. Take me by the hand, never let me leave. All I want to be is all you need. There's so much more to see. Bought a bus or a southbound train Find a little town no one knows I need I'm coming up to the majestic orangery where you can serve drinks and canapes after the ceremony while your guests meander and mingle along the gardens and to the fountain court down below. And the smell of the cherry blossom and the tulip right now is sensational. These gardens are so magical, I can't help but smile because it reminds me of my own wedding in 2004. There are so many secret spots around these gardens that you can take wonderful wedding photographs. And remember that romantic grotto I was talking about? That's right over there where you can get married. You can also have a string quartet here in the gardens and one couple even had a New Orleans marching band. I just want to be forever young This love won't come on now This love And now I'm walking through the glorious pergola with the sun shining through. And it's so tenderly looked after by my wonderful mother-in-law who really does have a green thumb. And remember I was talking about great spots to find for those wedding photos? Here's one of my favorite ones right here. Two nights in the garden cottage is included in your wedding, so you can rest and recharge before and after your big day. The cottage is in the most outstanding position overlooking the gardens and the rolling countryside beyond. What a wonderful romantic place to start your new life together. The cottage has been recently redecorated by a top London interior designer and is full of comfortable furnishings and quirky antiques. There are three bedrooms, including a master suite, as well as a sitting room, breakfast room, and a hall with a table that comfortably fits 10. The master suite has fabulous views and, of course, a full-length mirror so you can prepare for your big day. I even remember getting ready here myself. I'm standing next to the magnificent 17th century coach house, which we've recently converted into a wonderful wedding breakfast and party space. Welcome to the bar area of the coach house. This is where you can source all of your favorite drinks and cocktails. We even have draft beer and cider on tap. And of course, this space you can do anything with. You could put in sofas, you could put in high stools, and it's a nice place for people to maybe take a break away from the party itself. And in fact, you might even find me pulling my own pint behind the bar. This is the main space of the coach house. When my husband was growing up though, he remembers it as a working sawmill, but we've recently renovated it so it can seat up to 120 guests, and then afterwards, it turns into the most brilliant, amazing party space. So get ready to dance the night away right here. You can see there is plenty of outside space for you and your guests. Included in your wedding is a 9 by 12 marquee, usually placed on the lawn, and it provides some cover for your guests just in case the weather gets a little bit unkind. Other couples have used this space for an outdoor fire pit or even a mobile pizza oven. It's entirely up to you. 
Thank you so much for joining me here on this tour of Mapperton. I hope I've been able to give some helpful introduction to the stunning variety of locations that we have here for your wedding day. If you do want to come and visit us, please do call a member of our wedding team to book a visit and of course any other further questions you might have. See you soon and hope to see you here on your wedding day.